got another exam question on the equilibrium topic. So this one covers Le Chatelier's principle and equilibrium conditions and a KC calculation. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've basically got to come up with the temperature and pressure to promote the forward reaction so we can make as much hydrogen as possible. So in terms of pressure, you can see we've got four moles of gas on the right. We've only got two moles of gas on the left. So we need a low pressure that will favor the side with the most moles and obviously push the equilibrium over to the right hand side. So in terms of temperature now, you can see the forward reaction is endothermic. We've got that positive sign for the enthalpy change. So a high temperature is going to favor the forward endothermic reaction. So moving on to the operational conditions used by the chemical industry, they will be different for a couple of reasons. So the pressure, because it's low, the rate would be low as well. So obviously a low rate reaction is not what industry wants. And the problem with a high temperature is you've got increased or high energy costs, you could say. Moving on to part B, you've got to write the Kc expression and state the units for Kc for this equilibrium. So remember, all equilibrium constants have the products on the top, the reactants on the bottom, and the balance and numbers become powers. For Kc, everything needs to be in square brackets because we're dealing with equilibrium concentrations. And for the units, I've just put the units of everything into the expression. So you can see that these moles per decimeter cubed squared terms are going to cancel. So we're left with 1 over moles per decimeter cubed. So we'll just take that up to the top and flip the signs of these. So it will be dm to the 3, mol to the minus 1. So moving on to the final part, we've got to calculate the amount in moles of SO3 in the equilibrium mixture. Well, we can use the Kc expression to calculate the concentration of SO3. And then if we factor in the volume, we can turn that into moles. So rearranging for SO3 concentration, we get the square root of Kc times the SO2 concentration squared times the O2 concentration. So we'll just put the numbers in. Now remember in the information in the question, we were told the moles of SO2 and O2, not the concentration. So you can see here I've got the moles divided by the volume. Remember the volume has to be in decimeters cubed. So that's given us the concentration of the SO2 and that's the concentration of the O2. So the SO3 concentration is coming out at 6.12 moles per decimeter cubed. So we just need to turn that into uh, moles by multiplying the concentration by the volume. So that's coming out at 2.45 moles. Three significant figures is appropriate because the lowest number of significant figures in the data in the question is three. 